The following is rated S for spoilers. Some dumbass earth dude who met a girl, fell in love. That girl died and then came back a total dick. Hello and welcome to the Popcorn Hangover. My name is Alex. My name is Graham. Today we are going to be discussing Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3, written and directed by James Gunn, starring... I couldn't leave anybody out, so I'm just going to rapid fire. Chris Pratt, Chikwudi Iwuji, Bradley Cooper, Palm Clemente, Dave Bautista, Karen Gillan, Vin Diesel, Zoe Saldana, Will Poulter, Sean Gunn, so many other people. Um, releasing May 5th of 2023 with an estimated budget of $250 million, an estimated opening weekend of $282.1 million uh, worldwide and 114 million domestically. Graham, how, how's it going this week? <laughs> it's going, man. It's going I, good. I need to take a breather. So. I was like, you ran through that quick. But no, it's uh, it's good. This is... I'm so excited to talk about this. This movie, I literally was insane. Yeah. This was one of the most unexpected movies. Like, I was excited for it, but like I truly never would have imagined this movie doing so well or being as incredible as it was. Like, I went into the theater with no expectations, like really for this or how uh-huh. well it was going to be, but man, I, I, yeah. See, I did go into the theater with an expectation because, I mean, if you've listened to the show enough, you know, I'm not the biggest fan of the Guardians movies. I think the first one is good. I don't think anyone really is, really, but... <laughs> I don't think you know people then. Yeah. I people love Guardians and from what from what I've yeah. seen. Huh. I, I, I think Gar- Guardians 1 is good, Yeah, but it's extremely overrated i feel like any list you look at people have it in their top three if not number one mc movies of all time what literally just i'm literally literally go look up best like that's crazy ranking guardians one will be in the top three no matter what link you click on guarantee it um i think it's maybe top 10 it's a good movie but it's extremely overrated yeah um guardians 2 is just complete and utter garbage (laughs) Some of a volume two at number four. Yeah, people love volume two. Volume two is horrible. Volume two is complete utter garbage. The only good parts <sighs> about that movie were Baby Groot and Rocket, and that was about yeah. it. Um, yeah. And so I went into it. I wasn't excited at all for volume three, to be honest. Like, I was yeah. going to watch it because I have to, because I like Marvel <laughs> movies. Um, and I, yeah, I went in expecting it to be complete garbage Dang. um like they, they start the little like marvel scroll or whatever and mm-hmm. i legit said my head first shot is going to be little little raccoon being picked and it's going to be rocket and then the first shot was a little raccoon being picked and it was for rocket I said okay next next shot present day they're all just going to like show the like them all hanging out and doing their thing next shot all of them hanging out doing their thing and i legit sighed and went oh no this is <laughs> this is going to be so so bad cuz it's going to be so cookie cutter like we've yeah. seen a million times and then adam warlock showed up and completely decimated all of them and oh my I, gosh. I was just like yeah. wait hold on wait a minute what's going on yeah. and from that point on i was I was hooked. I was so surprised. And honestly, I, I this movie was a masterpiece. This was so incredibly good. Um, is it... I don't know. I want to say it's the best of the three. I think I need to rewatch the first Guardians. Oh, this is definitely best of the three. I, I, don't, I don't know if it's better than the first Guardians, but this was a really, really good movie. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. No, I absolutely agree with that. I think... Out of all three, absolutely, this is the best, in my opinion. Hands out. One was fun, two sucked. And I can't then three say this is great. the best just because recency bias, number one, and also this was a good movie, and we haven't had a good movie from the MCU that's, since. That's fair. People are saying this is the best movie since Endgame, and I think they keep forgetting No Way Home. And Shang-Chi um, and, and a few others. I mean, this is. You didn't like Shang-Chi, but this is I better like than Shang-Chi. Shang-Chi. Shang-Chi's yeah. great. Yeah. It's just. Mm-mm. And it's the same Marvel movie I've seen a lot of times. This is way better than Shang Chi. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. Shang Chi's good, but like, yeah, Guardians is not nearly as good as No Way Home. Yeah, I may be a little biased in that, but I would honest, like, I don't, I don't know. For me, I, yeah, it's it's definitely it's up there. Mm-hmm. Like, this is easily in my top ten for sure. Okay, for favorites, if not maybe even higher. I don't know if I could put it in top five. 
Because then I think about all the movies and I'm like, oh shoot, I'm already like five every time I th- yeah, every time I think about but it, like this this is a good because I'm like five. this could hit my top and three. Then I and start I think of like six movies it. that are better, and I'm like, yeah. oh, that's not my top three. But uh-huh. yeah, no, this was out of the trilogy. I don't even think with a recency bias, like this, I think was the best Guardians done. Mm-hmm. Everyone, every story, like everyone's growth, every everything that happened was so. Like I just, I'm literally just watching the movie in my head again. I have not been able to stop thinking about this movie. Mm -hmm. It was so good. It was literally, oh. Yeah, this is one of those movies where like I walked out and I just kept thinking about like all of it. And I just still Mm -hmm. had all of like the emotions and the energy. going. Speaking of emotions. For a while. Yeah. Did you cry? I cried. I, I, you've been waiting for this one. I have been. Because you asked me and I told you I wasn't. Here's the, I, I did not have the same emotional connection to animated creatures as everybody else did. Um, yeah. I understand what the sad parts were. I, I was brought to the verge of tears one time. Um, and it was during the most beautiful, the greatest one shot I have ever seen in the MCU, the, the corridor mm-hmm. fight. I recognize it was 90% CG, but I was watching like, oh my God, this is so beautiful. This is so incredible. I love this. This is amazing. I couldn't get enough of it. I got so hyped up. That that was the one time that like brought me like almost to tears because I was like, this is so good. What? <laughs> Why? I mean, I get it. So you're telling me the only time you almost cried in this movie mm-hmm. was because of tears of joy. Yes. You have no heart. Holy crap, guys. I couldn't stop crying. And I don't know if that says something else about me or not, but this movie was insane. It was so heavy. It was so emotional. Mm -hmm. It was brutal in some areas. Like, oh my gosh, I don't know how you didn't. Like, that's crazy. You said that there was a one liner that you cried at. I said there was a one -er, as in. Oh, I think it's a one liner. I thought, okay. A one -er. Cause I was thinking like, but in my head, the only thing I could think of is maybe like when we heard Groot, like speak for the first time as like, we understood him as the audience. Mm -hmm. I was like, maybe I could see that. But I was like, I don't, but maybe not. No, dude. I'm trying to think of the first, I was literally, I was crying probably within the first like five or six minutes of the movie. Interest. Like, because you thought rocket was dead. Maybe that here's, uh, and just like I mean, the reaction here's something, here's like, something to talk about i think the reason people were so emotional and they were all like on the verge of tears because they went in saying rocket's gonna die or someone i think yeah i think they just went in i think primarily rocket that was what all the marketing was about mm-hmm. and so i think people were on the verge of tears because they were already building up this idea that rocket was gonna die yeah and so i think they were already like sad and prepa- like preparing themselves for it whereas i went into it and i said all right look Let's break this down really quick. The, the best parts of one and two are Rocket, right? Yeah. He has all the greatest scenes, the best the best jokes. Um, he has the best arc of all of the Guardians. Like, of all the Guardians Easily. in yeah. Infinity War, uh, like, on his stuff yeah. with Thor and everything was, was a lot of fun. Other than, like, Gamora, I feel like Rocket's arc was actually good. And then he actually survived the snap and was in Endgame. Yeah. Like, Rocket is a really big, important character everybody loves. He's and, been through a lot. And Marvel yeah. loves them. Disney loves them. I just knew that he was, there was just no way he was going to die. Yeah. Uh, I, I didn't think, especially in the first five minutes, I did not think they were just going to kill off their... Especially by like one shot to the chest and then like the med pack malfunction. And I was like, that that's not how he's yeah. going to go out. Like so that's... I, yeah. I didn't, I don't know. I, I think that was my thing was I just didn't think he was gonna i gonna die and then he was starting to go off and i was like oh wow like I, I, is james yes. gunn really just gonna like kill rocket like when well, i thought about james gunn and i thought that would be a stupid decision that was like <laughs> that would be the, the dumbest story decision yeah all of this was literally for nothing yeah so then i don't know i just think he's like i want to say I for think, nothing i if think they did the actually critical filmmaker mindset in me just didn't let me get emotional because like I just knew that James Gunn isn't a complete idiot and he does know what he's doing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing with James Gunn as a director, love him Uh as a person. He scares the living crap out of me. He is, I don't know, just one of the scariest dudes, any interview, anything that man is so unhinged with, with the absolute utmost respect by saying (laughs) that like truly 
he is just a wild guy. Like I, I wouldn't put it past him if he really pulled the trigger and killed off Rocket. He's probably got something down the road planned with a greater scheme of things. And honestly, if that send off, like if they really did just let him go off and he got to reunite, dude, that was so sad. That was so intense, dude. His flashbacks. That was probably my favorite part. See, I kind of hated it. Really? I just didn't. I just didn't care. Oh, I, see, I, I did. I would have liked. I would have liked the flashbacks for maybe like a special presentation instead of like the holiday special. We got a rocket origin story, Bro. and then instead we just got either a I, two hour Guardian could have worked, or just I don't know. I, I people are calling this a rocket movie, and I understand why. Yeah, and I feel like it's an marketed like that but i feel like it wasn't a rocket movie this was a mm. guardians movie yeah 100 everybody all guardians everybody had really big arcs and really important moments yes. everyone grew rocket was just the only one whose story was singular whereas yeah. everybody else's was within the group right right and yeah i don't know i just i feel like people i feel like the marketing in particular just really Swayed people on how that they're talking and thinking about this movie. Absolutely, no, yeah, they one hundred percent have. But I mean, here is the thing: like they really capitalized on Rocket's singular story uh -huh. point. Because here is the thing: a lot of people, like you mentioned, like for example, you like you did not care that much. For, you didn't have that connection with an animated character necessarily for a yeah. raccoon. My only thing is, it's it, it was heavily hinted, like and like brought up about like his past and like he's mm -hmm. not a raccoon and like what was done to him and like all that stuff. Like that was crazy to me, and I've always wanted to like know a little more, but I've never read the comics, never really looked into it. I mean, yeah. So like the flashbacks here, that was crazy. Yeah, like, and I, I think like, that was another thing too. Is like Rocket before Guardians was literally in ten issues. Yeah. And so it's very easy to say, I want to learn about Rocket. And so I just read the 10 issues that he was in, and, and that was that. So, like, yeah. I, I don't know. I I have I knew Rocket's story and every, yeah, I don't know. It shouldn't hit me the same way. I don't, yeah. I don't, maybe, I'm, maybe I'm heartless. I don't know. No, I don't know. I don't know. I just, I mean, everything, though, from everything we got from, like, Bradley Cooper's voice acting. But also, so I didn't know this until you actually told me. So, like, I've seen... Sean Gunn in his little green suit on set uh -huh. being Rocket. <laughs> but the mocap for that. Uh huh. Like, I truly thought they just used like a stand in like puppet, ideally, or a rocket sized figure that they. No. You realize that with CG animation, you can make anything any size you want. Yeah. Because the words you used, you said, but Sean Gunn isn't the size of Rocket Raccoon. <laughs> Well, yes. Okay, yes, yes. Which now I understand. But, like, also I've seen most mocap suits. Anything I've ever seen Sean Gunn in is just a green body suit for the most part. Yeah. Not a, like, a mocap suit. Most mocap well, suits and even, are white even dotted. Even in this one, body. Bradley Cooper didn't even play Rocket for half the movie because over half the movie are the flashbacks. Right, and Bradley and Sean Cooper Gunn didn't did, do those. Sean Gunn did, yeah. He yeah, did Sean young, Gunn and young, another guy did. Yeah. Like yeah. Baby Groot. So, or not Baby Groot, Baby Rocket. <laughs> so, like... <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Everyone's like praising Bradley Cooper, comparing him to like RDJ. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. I love Bradley Cooper. He he's a really great actor. He's I a do. Cool guy. I do think Sean Gunn should be getting a little more. Sean a little Gunn more attention gets with completely this. A little more trashed. Praise. Yeah. Yeah. He's just being left out, which does. Yeah. Which I do feel bad about. But okay. So, what did you think of like the friends and the flashback, like that whole growth, the whole like you just really didn't care about any of that. No, T. Swiler annoyed Tees. the Cl crap out of me. Oh, that was so. Those characters literally, when they, bro, <laughs> I really thought. So, you know, with Floor. Uh huh. What was Floor? I'm curious. Tell me. A, a, a bunny? Yeah. With like spider legs and like the yeah. no mouth. Okay. Anyone that's seen it so far, a couple friends, my wife, people I saw the movie with, they're like, no way was that a rabbit. What did they think it was? I don't know. I was like, what else is white, fluffy, that small with the red eyes and ears hanging down? I was like, okay, yeah, they were tripping. But I was pretty sure. I was like, that's 100% I'm also rabbit. confused, and, and maybe someone listening will know. The, like the, the big controller person at the end who was like controlling the ship and mm -hmm. stuff was literally a rabbit with four spider legs. So like... Are you talking about in the middle of the center console thing when everything yeah, was like it was golden? a rabbit person with spider legs. Yeah. 
Just well, I didn't like think floor. it was spider legs. I just thought it was like a like a controller because like you know what? Yeah, nebula, coming nebula. out of her, well, like yeah. floor. So did floor actually die, or did they just evolve floor? No, floor died. Floor was shot. Floor was, but floor, you saw floor was on the ground. That also killed me when Lila got killed, and he let out that scream. Oh, and yeah. then he went. He went off on the high evolutionary. Uh huh. Is that why his face was stretched, or no? His face was stretched. Yeah, it was a mask. Yeah, because of what Rocket did to him. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, that was brutal. I gotta say, that's sure you. I'm, I'm, I'm really curious. Well, that just really wasn't noted on. Like they yeah, showed his face. He literally said, "This is what you did to me," and then he said, "This is a mask," and he took it off. And then they showed his face, and then the high evolutionary said, "This is what you did to me." Oh, I definitely <laughs> missed those words, but. I'm very curious how, where the line for the R rating was and how uh-huh. close they were to this. Because this is technically PG-13. Yeah. Which is definitely needed, but also, like, this was brutal. It was very brutal. This was one of Straight the, up decapitations and not even, on, like, 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 this was very it. close to a Deadpool level, like, just blood and gore for fun, ideally. Mm-hmm. Or yeah. we're walking in and we're like, kill them all and just start gun blazing, like, just going off, like... I was really surprised. Like I enjoyed it. Don't get me wrong. It was, uh-huh. was amazing action. Mm-hmm. Every fight scene, every, it was so well done. But just, in particular, the way that they used, like obviously gosh. they didn't like show how graphic it should have been, but like the way he would just like engulf people and like shove his twigs and stuff in like, their mouths, out mouth their back. Stuff. Yeah. Like, like I feel like that could have been, I, 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 the look of Groot really grew on me in this one, but also Groot was so freaking cool. Oh, he I was the best. Groot in this. This is my favorite version of Groot. Uh-huh. Even like OG big Groot, like his dad. Cause that also, I just, I just heard about that. What? Saw a whole TikTok on this. How this what? isn't Groot. No. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't know that the limb that fell off OG Groot. This is technically no, his yeah, they, son. Yeah. They grew it. Yeah. They're different. Yeah. I didn't know you that. need to catch up with the uh, catch up with the times. I guess, yeah. No, I'm I'm caught up now, but yeah, a lot of people, as far as I've talked to, love Swole Groot. This, yeah. this, yeah. He was doing, and then King Groot at the end, I lost my that mind, was, dude. He looked so good. He looked so good. And this this new set of Guardians, I'm kind of excited about. I mean, we're never gonna see them. You don't think so? No, we'll, well, we'll see they, them in Secret Wars. They'll be they'll be the like they'll just make a portals cameo, and that's it. Yeah. That's why I think we got a Star Lord will return and not a Guardians will return. I think Chris Pratt will have a role to play, but well, I think so. Like I think I'm feeling this is what I'm literally guessing with that because Star Lord has a series, comic book series called the Legendary Star Lord. Mm-hmm. That's just like many adventures of himself doing uh-huh. his own thing. We'll get a series. No, no, no. we'll get a movie. No, I'm thinking they- we get a TV show. They they called it the legendary Star Lord yeah. to say, hey, he's on his own. He's on his own, and hey, there's a comic book, and also like, remember in the beginning how he was all like, I'm Star Lord, don't you know it? Like I'm awesome, and it's never ever brought up in the rest yeah. of the trilogy ever again. That's all it was. They're not gonna. There's no way Chris Pratt's gonna do another however many years of this, especially without James Gunn. There's just no way. Man, I hope <laughs> you're wrong on that. I would love this to have a show. I mean, yeah. Him just cruising the galaxy. He, I mean, yeah, he does good, but yeah. I I wouldn't I don't think that meant anything other than he he's not done. Dang. Dang. So question then. So we got Adam Warlock for the first time. Oh, don't Will get me Poulter. started. Don't get me started on Okay. I really like this movie. Yeah. Adam Warlock. You didn't like Adam Warlock? Absolutely hated Adam Warlock. They did to Adam Warlock. What do you mean? They did to, you don't know who Adam Warlock is, is the problem. And so I think a lot of people. I mean, I know a gist. Like, this is not like. I think a lot of people, general audiences will like Adam Warlock, but they did to Adam Warlock what they did to Taskmaster. Like, Taskmaster and Adam Warlock are two characters I've been waiting to be in the MCU, and both of them have just been completely destroyed for me. Which, here's the thing, and that's what I was worried about. No, let me finish. Okay. I'm not done. Okay. (laughs) Adam Warlock, (laughs) literally, he went to the Avengers in the Infinity Gauntlet and said, hey, Thanos is going to kill all of us, so I need all of you to go out and be distractions for me. And then he goes one-on-one with Thanos, dies, comes back through the Soul Stone, then takes Nebula, who's even crazier than Thanos, 
steals the gauntlet from her, and then murders everybody. Yeah. Adam Warlock is this insane being in any form, any time he ever shows up. It's always to fight Thanos and to do all this crazy, powerful stuff. And they said, you know what? We're going to make him the butt of every single joke. He's going to have zero purpose in the movie other than to be a joke and to save the space Leia version of like with the Marvel version with, with, with Chris Pratt for some reason, I don't know why that they needed to do yet another fake out, which we never actually got to. I want to get to that yeah, earlier. Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely hated Adam. Here's Warlock. the thing I wanted and kind of expected the bigger, batter Adam. That's what I wanted. That's what I thought we were going to get truly. Cause like, that's mm-hmm. kind of what I expected. I don't, I don't know as much, but I do know like, his events against the like what he's done in the comics. Like he is a super powerful character. He, is, he would be, he should have been the most powerful right. being in the MCU. And that's what I expected. But then before things went on, before the movie came out, James Gunn at one point was like, imagine Superman as a 10 year old or something like that. Or imagine like a super. Sure. Yeah. So that just alone, just kind of like, I just went in with like a blank slate basically. That's and I thought fun. Will Poulter did great. Love the guy. Eyebrows I mean, finally got something played, else besides. He played <laughs> this character well. Yes. It was, I'll give and him here's credit. The I do think, like, I don't, I think in this movie, he was played well by Will Poulter. It was fun to have him. And I think, I think we will get more of him in the MCU. I'm hoping relatively soon, but also. Hopefully he learns to act his age. Yeah. And I think he will. I think he will. He took, he I took was, responsibility just, for a pet in this movie. He. He's doing the childhood step yeah. ups. He's learning responsibility. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> he lost his mother, but no, uh-huh. um, no, I, I freaking liked it. And also I'm sorry. Like why did homie have just such a majestic flight pattern? He did look, he crazy. was beautiful. He did. He just came in, just coasting straight line. No problem because straight into a fight. Like that was wild. That's who he was supposed to be. And they, yeah. and they wrote it. I do want to talk yeah. about the fake outs. Yeah. Um, yeah. cause I think everybody died in this movie at some point. Um, Nebula just kept turning into straight up. Uh, pods. I mean, I mean, yeah, ne- rubber Nebula, and then just snap yeah, back yeah, into Nebula, it. That's I hated that. I mean, th- that's established though. So yeah, like, Nebula's okay, but like, stressed me out. But Mantis fell like three or four times down something, and every time she snapped her neck, and it was just never, <laughs> she just kept falling on her head, and I was that, like, Holy that was crap. never addressed ever. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> um, Drax in the one place got completely decimated. <laughs> In the, in with the, that in massive the ray, I thought back. he was gone. And yeah, it was set yeah. up as in he was gone, and then he just gets back. They they carry him to the ship, and then he's fine for the rest of the movie. Yeah, I guess. Um, Rocket almost died fifty million times in this movie. Yeah, um, I think Groot was the only one that was like Star Lord. Okay, uh, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. Groot, I guess, did just become a head for a minute um, at the beginning yeah. there. Yeah, uh, which yeah, homie that's can grow back a lot faster than. Yeah, previous his his, his, his growing thing. rates are a little uh, inconsistent. Yeah, homie really went meta because he, he even when they were like, what did they tell him to go? They were like, go big or something or go uh, kaiju, go kaiju. Yeah, he just gets all so big. Good. Yeah, that was so fun. Like that was hilarious. But I was also like, can he just do that? Like he <laughs> yeah, just homie just yeah okay why like, not why uh, not? And then obviously, I I did think that Star Lord was dead. When they started to blow up his face, yeah, because you thought, don't react oh. like that, and, and then come I immediately back from and nothing. again instead of getting emotional, I was meaning just like, wait, what? Like, yeah, that's that's how that's how Star Lord goes out, and then, <laughs> the amount the amount of like memes and TikToks I've seen uh-huh. of Star or of uh, Adam saving uh-huh. Star Lord, that it was just <laughs> why why did he take so long to do it? But also, yeah, why. Because I'm sorry, for how long he was out there, you're not telling me someone could have saved Yondu at some point? Because I don't think he was even out yeah, as long just, as... like The <laughs> amount of just nonsense in this movie, this could have yeah. been a perfect five out of five for me. Yeah. But this, there's just so much nonsense in it. I'm like, was why? Was it like, like a 4.8 now because of the nonsense? Or like, uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I think you have like a 4.5 on Letterboxd. Oh, shoot. Okay. Yeah, that's I fair. Really I really liked like it. That. Yeah. I did, but... Can I talk about the one character I feel like has not gotten any mention or any praise? Uh-huh. Why did Cosmo go so hard? This movie can that I, was amazing. Can I make an uncontroversial or a, a very controversial opinion? Yeah, because every I feel like a lot of people love like love yeah. the idea of Cosmo, um, but I'm addicted to Marvel Snap. 
It's it's a it's it's a phone game. It's like a card game. And uh, the MCU, bud. Um, <laughs> and, <laughs> and Cosmo is one of the cards you can play. Yeah. And Cosmo's ability just triggers me so much because it ruins every single <laughs> deck that I play. Um, so I just have an eternal hatred for Cosmo. Um, not for anything against um the at any anything in the MCU. I just just, just a card. I just a, a card, card in a game that has nothing to do with anything. <laughs> um it just really triggers oh. me. It's oh my <laughs> gosh. This guy. Um just yeah. No. But I really I really liked Cosmo. I liked the use of her telekinesis like powers. Yeah. I feel like that was well done. But also her little relationship with like Craglin. Like that was that was yeah. hilarious. I I mean, I don't know. It was all just a really big joke. And it was funny. Yeah. But I feel like that's one of those things where in five years after I've seen this movie several times, like yeah. I'm just gonna wish was cut out because it it serves no purpose other than to be a joke. Yeah. Um I see, don't that, I don't that's, ever, that's, that's I don't ever see things that way. I'm literally saying like, okay, cool. They gave us this character. What are they going to be in next? Yeah, but then they're probably we're probably never going to see those, it again. The, like, that that is the exact reason that I don't like the first two Guardians all that much. Yeah, because I've seen them, and I don't like Deadpool. I laughed hysterically at it the first two yeah. times, and I hate that movie. I hate that movie. Really, once is enough. Yeah, it's, it's awful. Um, <laughs> it's a very that's a controversial bad movie, opinion. but um, such a good movie. But yeah, I just yeah, I don't know. It it felt a little pointless to me. Yeah. Uh, oh no, our thoughts this whole time have been really, really all scattered. over the place. But so, if anyone know. made any sense of any of that, um, <laughs> good, good for you. Um, I don't know. Wait, hold on. Okay, I'm talking about scatterbrain. Last thing I want to mention. Yeah. Uh, with acting, Karen Gillan, love her, phenomenal. Oh, her yeah. as Nebula was was great. Anytime she made a joke, <laughs> it it nailed for me. Like some of the jokes was like, okay, whatever. Especially like yeah. Mantis and Drax. I'm tired of Drax. I'm I'm done with him. He makes the same two jokes over and over again, um, and I'm, yeah. I'm sick of it. Uh, Mantis, I'm also a little. She just annoys me. Um, yeah. So I'm kind of glad that both of them are gone, gone for the foreseen future. Um, yeah. For the foreseeable future. Yeah. Uh, but Karen Gillan as Nebula, fantastic. Every joke of hers nailed yeah. for me. And then Zoe Saldana as Gamora, she was pulling some straight like Natiri level acting from Avatar, like with. Just the screaming and all oh. of all the things. Zoe Saldana, I know that she wants to be gone and done with all of this. I don't know why she would. I, I mean, really do you want to sit in a chair and get green makeup for like eight hours a day and then go act for eight hours a day? Right now she is made like, she's in like the billions, like the six or eight like billion mark. And she's also a part of like some of the biggest franchises ever. Mm -hmm. Marvel, Star Trek, Avatar, like is she in Star Trek? She's in the new movie coming up, yeah. And oh. it's projected to do really well. But oh. I'm just saying, like, it's... Yeah, like she's literally... Someone's going to put her in Star Wars, and she's going to enjoy... She's going to have a blast. But I don't know. I'm just kidding. But I love her. And, dude, I just don't want her to go anywhere. Because, like, she kills every yeah. role she plays. And every movie she's in really kind of does well. So... she 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 She's the magic key. Yeah. Which also, I got to say, too, these box office numbers are uh -huh. weak for what I expected. Because the amount of, like, hype around this movie, how many reviews I've seen, like, people, like, this movie really, like, blew up across what uh -huh. I've seen on TikTok, Twitter, Reddit, like, everywhere. Like, everyone has seen this movie. I don't think you understand how the box office works. But, these, these, these are very good numbers. Yeah. Well, no, I know. I mean, and, and I guess it only has only been out for literally, like, what, three days. A couple days, yeah. So, I guess that's true. This is These are fantastic numbers for three days. But... Uh -huh. I just really thought it'd be higher, really, for just like how much. No, I, don't know. I mean, people are burnt out on the MCU. Yeah. Uh, I this could potentially make a billion dollars. I wouldn't be surprised if it made a billion, but I also wouldn't be surprised if it didn't. Oh, I don't think it would. Um, I think it'd be seven hundreds. This just maybe. has a lot of rewatchability, and it's yeah. gonna bring in audiences who don't necessarily care about the MCU but like the Guardians movies. I don't know. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Anyway. Any any final thoughts on Guardians three before we uh, before we move on? Uh, no, fantastic movie. Definitely go see it if you haven't already. Um, get those box office numbers higher. But no, I'm just kidding. It was great. So yeah, yeah it really, it, Graham's endorsed. Yeah, he, he's, he's got a contract, with him, <laughs> so it'll help him a lot. I wish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, yeah. I really really liked Guardians three. I was not expecting it, 
but I loved it. I think this was a masterpiece. There was a letterbox review that I really liked um, from the user Ram um, with like a heart at the end. I don't know. I don't know how, how to describe that. That Ram little like, like a, triangle with the three, yeah, making the little less heart than three thing. heart, whatever. Yeah. He said, "This is not a movie. This is an effing apology letter from Marvel Studios." Um, yeah. This it's not the best in Sun game because No Way Home exists. But if it weren't for No Way Home. This, this is the second best yeah. insane game. In, I, in can, my, I can agree with that. In my opinion. Um, it did amazing. And part of what was so great about it was just like, it, it felt it felt final. Like this, yeah. it was such a good conclusion to all of this. That was really loud. Um, <laughs> that threw me off. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, it was just a really great conclusion. Yeah. And it was a really great trilogy. And a discussion I've had uh, a little bit with some people is like, what's the best MCU trilogy? Yeah so far because we've got what we counted six of them six. earlier yeah yeah so Which we blew we, my we, mind like, we have quite a few trilogies lots of things to, to think about and we're, we're gonna rank these trilogies and figure out where guardians 3 uh fits in with that so uh stay tuned Graham, do you have any like particular trilogies that you really not necessarily MCU related? Oh, okay, I was wondering. If, if you said like, an MCU movie, I'd be a little disappointed because like I'm really trying to think. If, I like, don't think like besides like Star Wars. Yeah, like having. I would say that the original trilogy is the second greatest trilogy of all time. What's your first? Lord of the Rings, hands down. Yeah, not in it. I know you have it. I, I still know. have it, which I want to. I literally, I you have off the, podcast. the entire every everything including hobbit movies blu-ray uh -huh. 4k dvd set has Don't it ever been opened no do i own a dvd player no you have a playstation though it's not disc version you have a ps4 though <laughs> it does oh i do have a ps4 yeah you're right i have a dvd <laughs> player so here's the thing yeah i need to watch those i like desperate i really really uh -huh. want to watch they're those. also on hbo max i know they're yeah, also like in too. theaters all the time i know i know and every time i see something or i see a clip it's from really it, it's really really accessible i know i know so there's really no reason why I haven't. I, I mean, have seen. there is there is one reason. It's because you need the like normal versions are each three hours, yeah. and then, but you need to watch the extended editions, so which are like four and a half hours. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> no, honestly, I really do need to dedicate the time to do that, and I want to. Um, so I can't. I can't put that trilogy in the ring yet. Um, mm -hmm. Definitely, yeah, probably the original trilogy for Star Wars um, is definitely up there. I, I don't know if there's an MCU trilogy though that I would put before that. No, I wouldn't put any MCU trilogy up there. Uh, but like, I don't know. For me, that'd be like Lord of the Rings, okay. Star Wars, the original okay. trilogy. I mean, it's literally you say the original trilogy and everyone knows immediately what you're talking about. Yeah. And it's not like the first three movies to like right. be a trilogy, you know? Yeah. Anyway, boom. That blew my mind really quick. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Back to the Future is an amazing trilogy. Uh, I only saw the first one. I never cared for the series. I could not get into it. Which a lot of people said the first one wasn't the best one. You need to keep watching them, but I don't know. What? Yeah, that's what my uncle said. I don't think. Yeah, because they, they own them all. No he's like, you just need to watch like two for and three. For Back to know. the Future? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. All right, I have no respect yeah. for your uncle. Um, <laughs> I don't know. There, there's, a, there's a lot of really, really good film trilogies out there. Absolutely. Um, And I, I think that, in my opinion, just in general, I feel like the trilogy format is one of the best formats for telling stories. Even when it comes to shows, I'm a really big fan of three seasons for a show, um, like Avatar The Last Airbender, mm -hmm. um, presumably Ted Lasso. Mm -hmm. uh, I wish the sex education ended on season three. It should have ended on season three, but it's not. <laughs> um, I don't know. Just the 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 three format yeah. in all the film is, is yeah. kind of how it goes. Like Even like when it comes to jokes, like something is going to happen like, Oh, it's always three attempts and then they'll right. do it or they'll make the jokes like three times. Right. Three is all over film and it works brilliantly with like the trilogy yeah. three section format. Even um, like when you break down, it's like beginning, middle end, everything is broken down into threes right. and it works brilliantly with, with trilogies. And yeah. so before we discuss the best MCU trilogy, okay, I think we need to break down, what it is that makes a good trilogy. Okay. Um, 
and I found an article on Medium uh, from a guy. His name's a Brett uh, S- Stig Miller. Uh, I'll link it in the show notes, uh, hopefully, if I remember, because uh, I tend to forget a lot of times. But that's beside the point. Um, I was re- he he wrote a really good article, kind of breaking down like some of the best trilogies, some of the worst trilogies, because trilogies can be can be difficult and they're really easy to mess up. Um, for example, if you look at something like Lord of the Rings, that is something that from the from the start was going to be a trilogy. Um, it from the very beginning always they always knew the end point and they always knew where uh, it was going to go. But then when you look at something like the matrix, for example, the first movie is one of the greatest action movies of all time. It completely changed film forever. And then you have these two other movies that low key kind of suck. And you, anytime you watch the first one, you have to like forget all the other stuff. Cause it kind of ruins mm-hmm. the, that first viewing. Um, and so he kind of says there, there's two big things that you need to have for a trilogy. And I, and I would agree. Um, number one is each movie needs to be distinct yet connected. Um, and so what that yeah. means is like, you need to be able to watch and any, every movie needs to stand alone. You can watch it on its own and it's still a complete story with the beginning, middle and end, but also it, they all need to go back to what the first movie uh was trying to accomplish um a good example of this that we haven't mentioned would be uh nolan's dark knight trilogy mm-hmm. you can watch any of those three movies and at any point in time yeah. and they're all their own self-contained stories but it's all this it all it all fits it's all, all, all the characters together. fit right all the story fits whereas you look at something like pirates of the caribbean if you watch the third, the third one, it completely differentiates itself from what the first one was trying to accomplish and all the rules are changed and everything's different. And so it doesn't really work as a trilogy because there's nothing. It's right. it kind of just fell apart somewhere. Right. So they are all distinct, but they aren't con- really connected other than by name and title. Yeah. Um, the other thing is it needs to have a big be- with that needs to have a beginning, a middle and an end. So each movie on its own, has a beginning, a middle, and end, but the first movie needs to be setting up the world, establishing the characters, and the third movie needs to be like the middle and a lot of, you know, the rising action and things are happening within the characters, and then the final film there needs to be some sort of resolution. And yeah. Star Wars is the perfect example of this. A New Hope is just entirely here's this world, here are all these characters. That's why even with the prequels now, like people still say you should show people Episode Four first, right? Because that's that's the best way to introduce someone to the world because that's what it was designed to do. Yeah. Um, and then empire strikes back. I mean, it literally ends with them losing. Like it, it ends on such a down note cause it's the middle. Yeah. Um, and then of course you have the finale where all the things rise up really, really good ending. Right. So th- that's, that, that's a, that's a, um, I don't know what I want to call it. A, 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 a crash course to the perfect trilogy and the perfect, to the perfect trilogy. Yeah. Uh, with examples, so best MCU trilogy, we've got we, we've got a few here. Um, I feel like based on what you just said, mm-hmm. a lot of these MCU trilogies kind of suck. Yeah, the, in yeah, structure, yeah. like in in beginning, middle, end, uh-huh. and the three pieces. And, like, and the one thing that I will I will give to the MCU trilogies is that all of these stories are also extending beyond right. the self-contained right. trilogy they're pushing the universe so we, we do have to bend s- some rules like again like i said if you said that one of these trilogies was your favorite trilogy of all time i would lose so much That's respect incorrect. you're right because <laughs> no it yeah. is yeah the answer is just no but if we're looking at it if we're comparing these trilogies with themselves yeah i think we can come to a conclusion yeah absolutely um, and there are a lot of elements of these things in there. Um, so for example, like Iron Man mm-hmm. um, is him dealing with how he has inherited this awful legacy and trying to make up for it right. and to like counteract it by, you know, protecting the world and putting a suit of armor around it, which is just the story of Tony Stark in general. But right. when you look at the trilogy, you know, the first one is introducing him, creating the Iron Man suit, all of that. The second movie is him, Oh wow! Like I just created this crazy new renewable energy source. This is crazy. And then the third movie is he all that's taken away from him, and he has to figure out how can he function right. without it. So like, 
there's still there's it's still there. It's yeah. just it also branched out a little bit. Right. So what are your thoughts on the Iron Man trilogy? Um, I really don't. I was never like a fan of the trilogy, honestly. Yeah. Uh, the first one, uh, Iron Man, is obviously incredible. I love that uh-huh. movie. That is a top tier movie for me, at any given day. But mm-hmm. the second one, I didn't care for that. Iron much. Man the, Two is very forgettable. The only part of Iron Man Two that I liked was, you know, the scene where it's uh, the garden scene. Yeah, 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 where him and Rhodes are like, yeah, iconic. Super, that was great. Well, you also really like the uh, the the racetrack suit up. Oh my gosh! How did this slip my mind? That's yeah. be, that's the best suit up, one hundred percent. Yeah. So okay, yeah, with Whiplash, yeah, I do. So Iron Man two wasn't bad. The two of those uh-huh. together, it's. Like I said I, I've rewatched it a few times. The first one I've seen countless times, but like when it comes to the third movie, I actually I saw it once in theaters, and that was it. I actually thoroughly enjoy the third movie. I what? think the third really? movie is underrated. I mean, besides seeing all the suits, again, I don't care about anything else. Like I, I'll, I'm going to say this for a lot of these movies. Is it my top five? Absolutely not. Yeah, it's a no. very mid Marvel movie, but yeah. I, I I do think it's underrated. Yeah. Um, but it is also pretty forgettable. Yeah. I don't know. I I I enjoyed it. It's also one of like, the first movies I really remember seeing, and it's also like one of the first movies like after Avenger. It was mm-hmm. the first one after Avengers, and like that was when the whole concept of a cinematic universe was like really f- finally yeah. like I comprehended it. So like watching Iron Man three, I think I was just. Yeah, there's a different level of excitement because I was. Do you remember going to the theater and seeing that? Mm-hmm. Did we go as a group to Iron Man three? Mm-hmm. Maybe was that the because I re- sounds- I remember we went and saw an Iron Man movie and there was a dude in a full suit. There was a Nick Fury in a full suit with the Tesseract and there was a Loki in the full suit with the staff. I I wasn't there for that. <sighs> I know I know Brendan was there and his dad. I figured it was our whole group, but it might have just been like. Just a couple of us guys. Maybe. I don't remember. But that. maybe okay. that happened. I would say that I, don't I remember, remember that theater experience. It's just like that was some of the coolest stuff ever. That was dope. Because like I was I was like, remember oh, I would Spider-Man love showed up? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? No. <laughs> you know exactly what I'm talking Shut about. Up, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we maybe used to dress up for movies, but it's I don't fine. know about we. I, I never dressed up. About. I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't spend money on a Spider Man suit. <laughs> <laughs> uh all right. Well, I, I, I'm including the Thor trilogy. Um, even Ooh. though I think we can just say right off the bat, this is the worst one. Yeah, one hundred percent. Um, Thor, Thor is a fine movie. Dark World, terrible. Pretty, pretty. I mean, it's not, it's not terrible. He, the problem now is like with the most recent movies. I feel like in the Infinity Saga, mm-hmm. it's like bottom three. Is this even a trilogy though? I mean, he's got three movies, but he's also got four movies. I'm, I'm not counting Love and Thunder. Uh, because Love and Thunder is garbage. Yeah. Um, even so though I have it two. up behind me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I don't know. I, I, I feel like Thor is one of those examples of like not uh, being distinct yet connected is completely thrown out the door. Yeah. Uh, Ragnarok was was fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, Taika Waititi completely changed things up, but yeah. I don't know. It's hard because also the Thor trilogy is all about Thor becoming worthy of being the king of Asgard. And in that sense, from a character sense, I think it's one of the strongest trilogies. Yeah. Because, I mean, a lot none of the others have that same kind of thread. So all, right. all of them are of varying quality and have very different vibes to them. Mm-hmm. They also do have that very distinct thread of all of them are about the same thing. Thor always has the ult, the same right. goal. Ultimately, right. has the same goal in all of them. Yeah, and it, I mean, it does work in kind of that beginning, yeah. middle, end thing. So I don't know. Maybe maybe it is a decent trilogy. It honestly, yeah. I mean, if thinking through the others, if we're thinking about it, like yeah, as a yeah, trilogy, like that makes the most sense based on like what we talked about in the beginning and like what you went over. That does because, like, for example, out of all of these, I think. It's well, either well, well, yeah. well, let's just rapid yeah. fire through the rest of these, okay. and, then, and then we'll go yeah, through and our then thoughts. Jump, okay. Um, so, Captain America, yeah, I think is definitely in the running to be one of the best. I um, I disagree. Okay, trilogy. Here's the thing: number one, incredible. Because what I was about to say, that right now in my mind is one of the tops. Uh huh. The because only all thing three are it, absolute bangers. They are. They are. But you get one absolute banger, incredible, tells a story perfectly. You get two, really ties in what happened to Bucky. What happens with 
Winter Soldier, all of that jazz. You got the uh -huh. whole reveal. That was like mind blowing. Uh -huh. Catches the shield. That was so sick. Uh -huh. But then you just get. And then Civil War a is, small a, is about Avengers. And then Civil with, War is about him stopping all the other Winter Soldiers. Yeah, but that's really not. I mean, which I hate that because here's the thing. That's it's not about that. It's noted on. That's noted on, it, but it's really about, hey, y'all blew yeah. up Sokovia. Y'all left up. Here's the Accords. Oh, you want to go one way? We want to go one way. We all so have the entire Avengers here. Let's fight. Like, that was Civil War. And here's the hard part with this discussion, too, is, like, what's more important, plot or character? Because I feel like with the Caps trilogy, mm -hmm. and the reason why I think it's so good, is because all of those are about putting Cap in, in a new environment that he's not used to. Mm-hmm. And also an environment that completely disagrees with everything that he is. Yeah. So the first one, he has to overcome being a scrawny little kid and he has to, you know, deal with everyone telling him he, he even, even when he does become a super soldier, right. he has to deal, like has to figure out how to navigate right. just being like a, a show, like a showroom trophy right. thing. Um, Winter soldier, he's, trying to figure out tech, not like being a super spy and technology mm -hmm. and everything that he's the only thing that he can trust that since he's woken up right. is immediately like, taken away yeah. from him and he can't trust anything or anybody. Right. And then civil war is, well, I, these are two people that I trust with my life, but the, both of them are on opposing sides. What do I do? That's His, yeah. So like, yeah, it from a care. If we look at it slowly from a character standpoint, and how the plot affects the character, I think it works brilliantly. Which it does. Like, that's the thing is I'm not saying like, it's just, it's just uh -huh. the third one, like doesn't really feel that way. Mm -hmm. Like to me, that's which I do understand like all of that. But I mean, even then, like with what we got with like Baron Zemo and like even the winter soldier, like mm -hmm. creation of all of them. Like, I feel like we got more of that in the Falcon winter soldier show than we did like with all that. Like, sure. I feel like that was the story they were trying to tell in civil war and they just kind of pushed it yeah, off. Civil war. Even I feel like black Panther had more to do with the Zemo stuff in civil war than captain America did. Like with the way that all mm -hmm. ended and was taken care of, like it just didn't even feel like yeah. that was even cap storyline. It just happened in a cap movie, which happened to be an Avengers movie, mm -hmm. which happened to be the third one. To, yeah. Like again, I'm not like hating on it. Cause again, in my mind, like I do think, like Cap is very high ranked. I think that might end up being. I got to go back and forth, but it's in the top three. Which and this, on this list doesn't say a whole lot because that's like fifty percent. But yeah. still, <laughs> um, moving on. Yeah, keep going. Spider Man. Yeah, uh, great. Yeah, literally. I mean, it's it's a three part origin story that no one knew was an origin story. Yeah, and it blew over our minds. Um, again, I'm a little biased because I love Spider Man, but I think. It's definitely a, a high contender. <laughs> it's your it's it's your number one, but it's a high contender. It's, it's a high, high contender. contender. <laughs> I will not be revealing my opinions <laughs> until after we go through the list. Um, the Ant Man trilogy is interesting because I should have gotten this one nice because yeah. we're talking about like Cap is good from a character standpoint, right? But Ant Man works really well from a plot standpoint because Absolutely. every single movie, I mean, Peyton Reed did all three of them, yep. and he will even tell you from the beginning he. He was like, no, I want the first one to be an introduction to, you know, quantum mechanics and everything. The second one is, all right, well, how do we use quantum realm in the real right. world? The third one is in the quantum realm. That was always his goal. Yeah. Um, I feel like, did. yeah, I feel like quantum mania was hijacked by the powers that be. Um, yeah. And so that made it a little tough, but uh, Ant-Man, I don't know. Ant-Man was a really good trilogy. Um, it's something that's not at the bottom of the list. Yeah. Um, I don't think you uh, said it's not at the bottom. I don't think it's at the bottom. Oh, I don't think it's at the bottom. Uh, and then we have guardians, which I also think is a really high contender. Uh, oh, absolutely. It's top because three I think, me. I think guardians holds all, all the elements so perfectly, mm -hmm. even though I'm not a fan, particularly of the second they one. They fumbled number two a little but bit, also, but, but also everything else one. was right. But yeah, but when we're looking at it, um, specifically how the story is structured from a trilogy standpoint. I think it's perfect. Yeah. The characters are all growing. Um, it was always intended to, you know, be one, two, like uh, James Gunn talks about how like the first one was about mo the mother. Second one's about the father. Third one's about the self. Right. Um, and you can very clearly see that throughout Absolutely. all of them. Um, and yeah, guardians just did a fantastic job. This was the most perfect ending to any, I mean, if we're talking about trilogies as a whole, 
um, this was the most perfect yeah. ending of all of them. Yeah. Um, and honestly, may even be the. I you know what? Here's here's my question because actually, like now I'm curious. So based on this list, uh-huh. and we're gonna kind of go through this list and rank. Uh huh. Are we ranking the best trilogy or our favorite trilogy? The best trilogy. Okay. Because here's the thing. I think Guardians mm-hmm. might be my number one. Yeah. Because even even if other thing even other trilogies do specific elements better mm-hmm. this has all of the elements are done really really well yeah and also it's on a much bigger scale oh um, yeah we're looking at captain america yes we're introducing this new world to cap but it's a very familiar world to us right a mostly familiar right. world to us whereas we're being introduced to a whole galaxy of worlds yeah um we're also balancing however many characters there are and all of them have incredible arcs um the trilogy just it works so well as a trilogy yeah uh Yes, there is the Avengers movies, but it is a lot more self-contained than the other movie, other trilogies are, especially like the big three with Cap, Iron Man, and yeah. Thor. I think Guardians, th- I think the Guardians trilogy may be the best MCU trilogy. I, I agree with that. Yeah, because well, I say if we look at trilogies, yeah, that would be my number one. What would you put at your number two? It truly, in my mind. Cap and Spider Man are tied for me, but Spider Man uh-huh. would take number two if I had to. Re- if I really had to place them, I think I agree, and I think it's mostly because I have a bias towards Spider Man. Uh, same, um, yeah. <laughs> this was this was honestly this was like the biggest yeah. argument with the person specifically I was talking to about. Uh, we kind of came with Guardians and Cap are the top two, and then which is which is best. He leans more towards Cap being number one, really? um, and I definitely i i, I, I see can where he's see coming it. from yeah, for but, sure. Um, but if you take those same I just, values of how Cap could be a great trilogy, and you put those up against Guardians, Guardians mm-hmm. just trumps it. Like, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I, I think, yeah, by by these terms that we've set, but for ourselves, I think, um, yeah, I think that Guardians may be the best trilogy maybe that the we've best. gotten. Absolutely, and we're gonna say Spider Man then Cap. Uh, for the lower three, I'm gonna I'm gonna go Ant Man. I'm gonna go Ant Man Iron really? Man Thor. Uh-huh. Yeah, Thor was definitely my lower. Like, that Honestly, was for maybe me. Iron Man's last. I think I'm going to go Ant Man, Thor, Iron Man. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I guess I am like kind of being biased down and thinking about to Iron Man because I'm uh-huh. like it just started at all and it's Iron yeah, Man. The like, Thor movies bottom, uh, individually but... aren't. Honestly, yeah. honestly, <laughs> the Thor Iron Man comparison is hard because they both have a really really amazing movie. Mm-hmm. A halfway decent one and then w- the bottom two yeah bottom three are two of the bottom three of the infinity saga are thor yeah. iron man two um yeah coincidentally so <laughs> yeah that's uh that's our ranking yeah <laughs> yeah guardians taking number one guardians takes number one uh what what are what are your what are your thoughts on those rankings let us know on all the things uh, and but before I get too deep into the outro, Graham, do you have any final thoughts on trilogies? How we've ranked these trilogies, Guardians three, any of the things we've talked about over the last hour? Um, besides the fact that a trilogy is one of the best ways to tell a story, mm-hmm. um, I just I think it's any time we can get more of a con like like say someone drops a movie and i'm like i hope they expand on that like mm-hmm. i'm never really hoping for a universe even though everyone's like oh people like that let's do a mc yeah. let's blow this up you don't need to do that mm-hmm. give us a good story give us a trilogy that's really the best way to run something um and so yeah trilogies are probably my favorite way to go when it comes to movies especially tv shows like you mentioned i think mm-hmm. anything more than three seasons is too much but anything less you just i mean some, it leaves you wanting it works. More. i just feel like in general three seasons mm-hmm. just tends to hit, hit it's kind hit, of that perfect hit note the, hit the yeah perfect spot so yeah. no absolutely guardians three incredible definitely go see it like i said if you haven't um you will bring tissues if you're like me if you're heartless you don't need it right alex uh, yeah <laughs> i guess i guess i'm heartless now Ooh, go me. No. Uh, yeah, <laughs> thoroughly enjoy Guardians 3. Um, big fan of trilogies. I love just like pointing out like the rule of three, um, the importance of triangles and things like that. Uh, it's a lot of fun to look at. And so next time you watch a movie, uh, just think about how many times, how many th- different things happen in threes throughout it. You'll find it's a lot. Um, anyway. You've been listening to the Popcorn Hangover. My name's Alex. That is Graham. We've been discussing Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. What are your thoughts on Guardians 3? Let us know on all the things. Instagram, TikTok, Patreon.com, slash the Popcorn Hangover. 
Next week, we're talking about a franchise that Graham and I have not seen a single bit of, uh, but it's a massive franchise. Yeah. Um, it's hard to keep track of because every title is completely different. Yeah. Uh, How do you know what order? You know? Yeah. Um, except sometimes the, the, the number's in the title, but sometimes it's hidden, you know? Uh, anyway, <laughs> that's your tease for next week. We will uh, we'll talk to you next week. Peace.